why are we seeing this spike in heroin use? Well, you know, it's simple. The more you make, the more you sell. And what we're seeing is heroin streaming into New York City, creating new users and therefore greater demand. That means more seizures, more arrests, and more overdoses. And one former high-level drug official that I spoke to described heroin as this monster that you can't kill. It has always been lurking. It has never gone away. The question, how did it get here? Well, you've got to go back to the 1990s when Colombian drug traffickers actually started flooding the city, the whole eastern mm -hmm. quarter, with this high-purity, low-priced heroin. So instead of $100,000 a kilo, it actually went to $60,000 wow. a kilo. It made it much cheaper for people to buy, and it was much pure, 60, 70, 80 percent more pure. That's compared to the old stuff, which was just 6 percent purity. So it really changed. It now costs between 6 and $10 a packet. Wow, and, and what you're getting is, is a lot stronger, which you realize why it's becoming even, even more deadly uh, than it used to be. I mean, but you know what, Deb, is interesting. I, I feel like heroin used to have, you know, it had more of a stigma to it 10 to 15 years ago. It was too hard of a drug, or people saw it as too low class of a drug, but that's changed, right? Absolutely. And that's because, you know, back in the day, people thought of heroin uh, as used by these junkies in dark alleys injecting themselves. But then back in the 90s with this high purity, low cost heroin, young people began actually snorting it because it was so pure. And they did this at parties. They did this with their friends. It created a much different kind of clientele. And it also moved out to the suburbs. One former narcotics official tells me that, you know, it used to be rare to seize a single kilo of heroin. Now, authorities are seizing up to 20 and 30 kilos at one time. And last year, DEA agents confiscated 144 kilograms of heroin. That's $43 million worth. And to put that in perspective, that's 20% of seizures nationwide. That's amazing. I and mean, when you talk about where they buy it, I mean, you now see with Philip Seymour Hoffman, you know, everyone from what we understand in a very uh, popular, um, you know, hip, upper class part of, of Manhattan, uh, you know, at an ATM being able to do a drug deal like this. Uh, this is a sort of um, situation in New York you might have thought would have happened in the movies uh, 20 years ago. But, you know, Deb, one of the scariest things about the heroin crisis is who is using it. Exactly what we're seeing uh, with Philip Seymour Hoffman um, and, and in those sorts of, of neighborhoods, a big change. Yeah, there's definitely been a big change. And, you know, they found 70 bags of the heroin with him. When you think about it, an addict can use 10 bags a day, somebody who's got the money wow. to sustain that. So so you put it in perspective, this could have been maybe a week-long binge, even though to us, to you and I, it sounds like so much. But the sellers are targeting much younger clientele. You can even uh, discern that by what they're labeling these. There are packets that are labeled government shutdown, <laughs> NFL, Lady Gaga, even Obamacare. So it's clearly people who are sort of in the know, who are educated. Secondly, wow. uh, there's there are these heroin mills. What's fascinating about them is that these drug traffickers from Latin America are actually taking the drugs from the South and they're moving them into locations that are ready to go. That's where they're cut, that's where the heroin is cut, processed, put into these envelopes, and then distributed as fast as possible, not just here in New York City, but also to other regions. And so it's, it's, it's a hub, as you mentioned.